Dr. Anjana has totally 14 years of experience in social science and liberal arts higher education. She's worked across the domains of sociology, cultural studies, and decolonial feminism. She started her career in sociology at Stella Maris College as a lecturer in 2008. Subsequently, she finished her PhD in cultural studies from IIT Madras in 2014. She then joined Sheffield University in UK in 2015 as a senior lecturer in sociology, where she also served on the university's Race Equality Commission. In her seven odd years there, she has taught over 100 students and she has been instrumental in taking care of them in a holistic manner or what she calls pastoral care. She will explain further what that means. She helps students realize their desires and goals with respect to what they want out of the university experience. She has won numerous awards for her efforts, right? And um, she's particularly committed to the whole idea of a student experience. And she has her three student nom awards were student nominated ones for teaching and overall student experience. So I think you'll be in great hands at Sai University with her. And I, from a personal standpoint, I can tell you I've been interacting with her for about a month now. It's a lot of fun. And that's the kind of person you want in student life. So without further ado, over to you, Dr. Anjali. Thank you, Sanjeev. What a great introduction. I feel like it's a lot to live up to. <laughs> I always feel like... I was playing it down, actually. <laughs> <laughs> You're very kind. I'm Anjana. Um, I don't need to be called doctor or ma'am. I'm more than happy for you to address me by first name. But equally, feel free to call me however you're comfortable. Um, and I'm basically here to answer questions, to chat to you about whatever you want. Um, I'd like this to be as freewheeling and as open a session as possible. The main redeeming quality that I see about working in higher education is that I get to work with young people and not deal with adults as much. I mean, grown-ups are hard work, so... <laughs> So I'll be upfront and say that that is y'all are the part of the job that I love the most. Um, I put up with the other stuff because I get to work with students. So for me, that's the high that I get um, out of this work. And like Sanjeev said, I've done it for a long time now. Um, and I was one of those lucky people that I didn't really know what I was doing. I finished my undergraduation. I went to London for my master's. And I came back, I did some work with an NGO, with actually a few NGOs. I traveled um, rural Tamil Nadu. I worked in Bombay. I did, um, you know, I, I worked for a human rights uh, law organization. And I don't know, I was a bit like, oh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I kind of wasn't fitting in. I was like, oh, I, you know, you, you know the feeling, right? Where you just feel like you just don't know what's going on. Um, and you don't know how it'll pan out and you're like, oh, I don't want to waste my life. Anyway, so all that stuff. Um, and then I came back to Chennai and then I worked for a theater group that I'm still a part of. So I, for a year, I just did theater stuff. I did music um, and I had a great time, but something was still missing. Um, and then my old teacher called from Stella and she was like, man, we need somebody to teach like sociological theory. And uh, you're the only like free child that I know who actually enjoyed that stuff. So, so would you be up for coming and trying? And I was like, okay, we'll give it a go. And so I went in and I took my first class and I fully fell in love with it, but I fully messed up also. Okay, um, so it was a moment where I knew this is what I want to do, but it was also a moment I realized I have no idea what I'm doing. So, so I had, I was lucky enough to both fall in love with the work that I do and realize that I was messing it up. So the reason I'm telling you that is to say that is completely okay. If there are things that you love that you want to try, but you feel like, you know, I'm not that awesome at, that's normal, okay? This idea that, you know, this thing that we say, or oh, play to your strengths. You don't know what your strengths are, man. What are your, like, 18, 19? Like, I'm nearly 40, and I'm still figuring out what my strengths are, okay? So I just want to put that out there. 
I also want to say that I had a rough time at school. I changed a lot of schools and I experienced bullying. I experienced a lot of exclusion. I didn't have a great time at school. I actually hated school. It was awful. Okay, like we moved to Delhi and then in Delhi, I was a madrasi. Then I moved back to Madras and then in Madras, I was the Delhi girl. It was like, you know, it's just in England, they have this saying, you can't do right for doing wrong. And it basically means whatever you do, it just, it, it's not enough. So I didn't have a great time in school and I want to be upfront about that. But college was an amazing place for me. Like it's the first time I felt like I belonged somewhere and I kind of opened up and I flourished. And for the first time, I actually made friends, which was great. Um, and so college is a, is, a, is a special space for me. Um, but having said that, I took a break last year because I was feeling a bit burnt out from university. And I taught school in Chennai for a year because I thought, one, I want to learn more about what the journey of school is like before you come into university. And two, I was like, I wonder how it'll be for me to be back at school, right? So I had a lot of learning in school. I suddenly realized that, you know, by the time we come to college, we get very serious. We're like, oh, we have to learn this stuff and we have to be professional and blah, blah. But actually we forget that we also have to have fun, right? Learning needs to be fun. You know, we should be doing silly things. We should still, we should still be cultivating and developing that childlike enthusiasm for stuff. You know, there's somehow this horrible notion that being an adult means you get less fun, which is quite sad, really, and shouldn't be the case. Um, you know, you, you should keep that sense of play, right, alive as, as you grow. So these are some of the things that I've been sitting with in the recent past, okay, that I feel like I'm constantly learning and my best teachers have been my students, right? Because I feel like kids in school even more so, but they really keep it real, don't they? They don't, they don't like shy away from telling you anything. If you're messing up, they're like, whoa, you're messing up. And if you're lying, they'll tell you that you're lying, right? So... <laughs> So I find that like working with young people is a great way to stay honest, right? So I also want to make a commitment that I am not going to spin some spiel, right? I will answer honestly wherever, wherever you ask me questions, right? I will be straight up about stuff. And I will also tell you that student life is a navigation. It's a negotiation, right? Obviously, y'all at a stage where you're like waiting to leave home and you're like, oh my God, I want out, right? So suddenly it kind of feels like it's a lot of pressure, right? Because everything is riding on this college experience and you're like, oh my God, like I'm going to do all this stuff that I never got to do in my whole life. It is still India, okay? Parents are still parents, right? And we still have stuff that we have to navigate, okay? So while I want us to do a lot of blue sky thinking, right? I want us to build with our imaginations, but hold on to the realization that not everything that we build in our imagination will translate immediately, okay? So that's something that I want us to hold together. And the other thing that I need you to remember is this is an equal process. Yes, I have more authority in some ways. And of course I'm here to guide and be there for you fully, right? But this will not get, like, you are the heart of this. Okay, without you, there's nothing, right? So this is not a process where I'm going to tell you stuff, right? And I make the decisions and pass it on to you. Nah, that's boring. And it's also just, what's the point? Like, how is it? That's not student experience. That's Anjana experience, right? So <laughs> for it to be student experience, y'all take the lead. Okay, so I will be like a shepherd person. Right. So, you know, when when you take sheep out to graze, there's something we saw in England a lot. And I live um, in Sheffield. I lived in Sheffield, which is north of England. Very different from London. It's quite rural, a lot of farming, a lot of sheep, a lot of sheep. You know, so you'll see big flocks of sheep and shepherds and stuff. And, you know, sometimes sheep are very smart and they're great. They really take care of each other. They move together. They keep each other warm. They take care of each other's babies. They're great animals. 
But, you know, sometimes they get stuck in fences. They do dumb stuff. You know, they'll see like a turnip patch on the other side of a fence and they'll sh- try to shove their huge bodies through a fence and get stuck. And I think we all know what that feeling's like when we do something dumb and you're like, oh my God, I'm stuck. Okay, so so I will be there for the oh my God, I'm stuck stuff, right? And I will share with you everything that I know, everything that I've learned along the way. But I also believe that it's really important for you to make your own journeys, okay? Grown up people love saying this thing of, oh, like, oh, don't reinvent the, be- the wheel, you know, like, We've already done all this stuff. Why don't you just listen to us and then you'll save yourself a lot of heartache and a lot of trouble. That's just not how it works because each of our wheels is something we're making, right? So actually reinventing the wheel is really important because to you, it's not a reinvention, it's an invention, right? The wheel of your life is just yours, okay? So there'll be mistakes, there'll be mess ups. I will make mistakes, I will mess up. But the commitment that I want to offer here is that we keep working through all of the mess, okay? So that's like some of the foundation stuff that I want to put to you. Um, I also am very particular about, well, I worked with the first batch of Sai University students before I joined. This was like earlier, earlier in the year. And we did a, an exercise of, a vision board exercise, you know, where basically we just did a lot of craft stuff. Like we had chart papers and beads and sketch pens and feathers and all kinds of crap. And we basically did like a collage, right? There were like eight chart papers full of stuff that students were like, this is what I need. This is what I want. This is what I hope for. This is what I'm dreaming about. And I think you will probably not be surprised to learn. So the categories broadly were emotional needs, material, you know, practical needs and intellectual needs. And I think you will not be surprised to learn that the emotional needs list was the longest. Okay. Because it is hard being out in the world right now. The last two years have been unprecedentedly hard as if it wasn't difficult enough being 16 17 and 18 we also had pandemic okay so it has been a tough 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 time okay so i just want to acknowledge there's been a lot of grief there will continue to be a lot of grief it's been hard being isolated being cut off right in some ways those things have also brought us clarity and you know sometimes that happens right when bad things happen things also become very clear right? That's why I moved back to India because I spent COVID all by myself. I went 90 days without seeing another human being. It was pretty intense. Mm -hmm. Um, So I want to acknowledge that I know it's a tough time. Okay. So if you feel fragile, if you feel sensitive, if you feel a little too close to breaking more often than not, you're not alone and it's okay. Okay. And the whole point of being in a university community is that all of us have space to be held, okay? It may not be perfect. You may not always get exactly what you want, okay? But I am very particular about you having that space, okay? Cool. Okay, now I'm done. This always happens. You're like, oh, I'm not going to talk. And then you just, anyway, so I'm done. But the reason I wanted to say all this is because I know Indian systems of education. I know that we're very used to a certain kind of hierarchy. I know that we believe that teachers are supposed to be a certain way. Students are supposed to be a certain way. And I just want to say, I don't really follow that model. Respect is very important. Accountability is very important. Responsibility is very important. Fun is very important. But I don't believe in that super hierarchical, traditional way of operating. So that is why I'm putting all this on the table so that you know that you can open up and ask whatever you want to, whatever you need to. Okay, so now I'm going to take it, throw it to you. And you can just either unmute and go. But I feel like there's quite a few people on the call. So I think it'll be hilarious. And there's going to be like 30 seconds of silence. And then all of you are going to be like, okay, this is the moment that I'm going to unmute. 
and then seven people are going to try and speak. So, so maybe we'll do the hand raise. I would love it if you actually just spoke your question. But again, if you're feeling like you would prefer to type it out for whatever reason, feel free to do that. And then Sanjeev can read out the questions um, for us. Okay. 